Hey, folks, I am Kevin Ioli. Welcome to Yahoo Sports. My guest now is Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. As I was just saying to him before we started recording, in contention for the nicest guy in MMA. We, I don't want to say the nicest because then I'm going to have a couple other guys like Gilbert Burns and Vicente Luque coming after me. But Stephen Thompson is definitely up there in the uh, top two or three uh, for the nicest guy. Stephen, how are you, Mark? <laughs> Doing great, my friend. Glad to be on with you and ready to rock and roll Saturday night. It, and I'm excited. Gonna rock and roll with the aforementioned Gilbert Burns. That is going to be some big fight. He's ranked number two in the welterweight division. You are ranked number four. Is this the fight you think that'll finally get you uh, back to where you want to be, back to the promised land of a title shot? Do you think beating Gilbert Burns does that for you? I think so, 100%. I think going out there and beating the number two ranked guy, a guy who just fought for the title, uh, with a good one over him, they got to give me that title shot. I know there's a few guys that – they're looking at Colby Covington, even Leon Edwards, which I think is more deserving of a title shot than Col than uh, Colby Covington. But it is what it is, and uh, I think, like I said, with a good win over him, um, they got to give me that title shot, man. I know you, you drive your cra you know self crazy if you think of all these what ifs, but you know, you guys, it's your livelihood. Do you pay attention to social media? And did you see when Nate Diaz and Usman just recently were were discussing uh, fighting each other? And Usman says, "Hey, bring it on if you want to do it." Like, uh, what does that do to you when you see that kind of thing? You know, eh, you know, you see these guys who are very popular in the division, such as Nate Diaz. Um, I mean, it kind of makes sense. I mean, he's a big draw. But at the same time, it's like, man, these guys back here are working their behinds off to get this title shot. I mean, look at Leon. He's won nine fights in a row and still hasn't fought for the title. So I think there's a little something wrong with that. But at the same time, you know, Kamara Usman has definitely set, uh, settled himself for one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. So he can kind of do what he wants at this point and fight who he wants to fight. But if it was me, man, you know, give that Leon Edwards a shot. Give me another shot. Somebody who, who um, you know, hasn't fought for it yet. So, uh, and, and that's it. I think I'm, I'm the worst matchup for him. Well, he's fought, you know, so he's basically fought everybody but you. And, you know, if you consider himself in the top five, you know, and you being number four rank, so the fifth guy, you know, he's fought everybody else but you. So that if you give a good performance against Gilbert Burns, you have an argument to make there. Exactly, exactly. Good win over him. And it really depends on how I beat Gilbert Burns for sure. I got to go out there and I, and I got to put on, I got to do what I know I can do out there as an athlete. So um, yeah, man. So I'm not looking past Gilbert at all. I mean, he's the guy that's going to be, I'm going to be standing in front of um, come Saturday and I'm known a lot of people to look past opponents and then get taken out. So I cannot do that. I, I talked to him about this and I, I made the point that I thought you might have the best footwork in MMA and certainly uh, best footwork of anybody he has seen. Um, and, you know, it, it kind of reminds me of when Dominic Cruz was on a roll, guys fighting Dominic Cruz, and they had difficulty hitting him because of how good his feet were and the angles he created and everything. Um, you know, do you feel like, you know, he's talking about all the, you know, the kickboxers he's brought into camp and everything. Do you think in one training camp, a guy that has been a, you know, largely a grappler for most of his career can adjust and be ready for the kind of footwork and the intricacies of your game that you bring? You know what? That's a good question. I, I would find it very, very difficult. I know that Gilbert Burns, is a, he's an intelligent guy and he's smart. Um, he's definitely going to work on it. He's going to have some key plans out there um, to look for, but I don't think he's going to stand there and bang it out with me. I think he's, he's definitely going to look to get the fight to the ground. Right. And most like everybody does. That's the thing about for me, you know, I pretty much prepare everybody the same way because everybody at some point wants to get me down. Every fight starts standing up. So, but you know, somebody like Gilbert, I'm just, I think, I think it's just an honor to step out there with him and one of the best of at 155, one of the best at 170s. And I'm just so glad that he's given me the opportunity to do it. Cause there's a lot of guys in the top five who were like, Nope, I'm not fighting this guy. I'm like, I'm just sitting here waiting on people. Oh, so, but uh, I'm just excited to step out there, man. I want to ask you this. This is um, your first fight since uh, your brother-in-law, Chris Weidman, broke his leg in a, in a horrible tragedy. One of the things nobody wanted to see. You never want to see any, anybody get injured like that. Um, I know you guys are close and Chris is walking, which is great to see. He was even in the gym a couple of days. But, you know, in your mind, given how close Chris is to you, is there any, you know, hurdles to get over knowing what happened to him? Like, you know, does that give you any case of the willies or anything because you know how, you know, what can happen and you saw a family member? You know what? It, it, it was devastating because I was there in his corner when it happened, man. It was devastating for Chris, but he's in good spirits now. And for me, it, it didn't bother me at all. I mean, things like this happen in our sport 
Um, it's only happened three times. And he's been a part of two of them, which I could wrap my head around. I was like, what the heck? So, but it didn't bother me at all. I mean, especially getting ready for this fight. I knew, I know that I, I'm going to be full, I'm fully prepared for this fight, conditioned, mentally, physically, emotionally, and whatever happens, happens out there. Um, you know, I'm fine with, I've already lost. I've been knocked out. So, which was a big fear for me. Those are two big fears when I was undefeated for such a long time, for many years. And now it doesn't bother me. Like, I know I can just go out there and fight now and have fun. And I think it's shown my last few fights that I feel a little, bit, a little bit more free whenever I step out there in that cage. So it doesn't bother me at all. Is that, you know, when you say it doesn't bother you, you know, I know you have that human empathy for, you know, for another person. Um, but is it just from being in the cage for so long and in the fight game for so long that like you understand it? Like, because I think most people look at it and they go, I don't know if I ever want to kick anybody else again when I see that happen. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, it, it, and it's, you know, I've been in the game for so long. And so has Chris and a lot of these other fighters out here, you know, you see something like that and you kind of, of course, after it's said and done, you kind of put that in the back of your head. You don't bring it up again. Um, and, it, and it's just because, you know that you're going to be stepping out there at some point in time and you can't let something like that mess with you mentally. You know, if, especially for somebody like me, if I let that bother me, right, you know, right. and, and enables me to throw my kicks as hard as I can out there, that's going to mess with my game, my whole game. So, you know, there's some things you can control and some things you can't control out there. And those were just one of those things that you just couldn't had no control over. Anderson Silva came back, you know, and, and one fight after having had that happen, which most people, when they, you know, I saw him wheeled across the stretcher right in front of me and the pain was on his face. It was just like, I wanted to cry for the guy. Right. And he came back and won a fight. Do you feel Chris can do the same thing? I mean, you're around him, you talk to him, you're married to his sister. So what, you know, uh, what, what is the, what is the situation? Then? So that's, that's just it. Like Chris Wyman is the type of fighter who can never throw a kick again and still win fights. He's not known for his kicks. Right. Now, for somebody like me, on the other hand, that's a different story. So, but for somebody like Chris, he could definitely come back and still be and still and still win fights, still beat guys. The majority of the guys in this vision, I, I still believe he can beat coming back after this injury. But uh, it's funny that everybody thinks that I'm uh, Chris's sister is actually. So I wouldn't say he's really, I mean, he's my brother for sure. But my brother married his sister. Oh, your brother. <laughs> that was the way it went. I yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody does that. It's okay. You're not the first and won't be the last. <laughs> so I get, I stand corrected on that. I'm sorry about that. It's uh, all good. What will it mean to you if you can be in his corner when he comes back to win a fight after something like that? That would be amazing. That would be amazing. You know, I've been in his corner twice. I've been in his corner every, every time, but actually in his corner twice. The fight where he fought Kevin Gastelum and this most recent one where he injured himself. So it would be, oh man, it would be amazing to, for, for me to be in this corner and him go out there for his, for his, uh, you know, his first win back. Um, you know, this guy has been there for me since, man, for, for over eight years, wow. helped me improve and become a better, not just a martial artist, but a better human being watching him, you know, you know, you know have that fighter mentality and then have that father mentality at home. You know, know how to separate that. Right. And I think that's that's special, man. I think it's really cool. That that is awesome. Um, you know, you have had, as we mentioned, two cracks at the championship. What did you learn from those two fights? You had uh, a really close loss and a draw with uh, Tyron Woodley that you know you you will bring into not only you know your past fights, but this fight and going forward if you do get that championship. How are you going to be different than you were when you fought Woodley before? Well, the thing is, when I fought those when I fought those two fights, it led me to believe that. You can't, you, you have to give it all you got out there. You can't leave it in the judge's eyes in order to win a fight. You got to go win it. So not just going out there and, and doing what you can to just barely come out for the win. You got to go beat this guy. Right. You got to beat him mentally, physically, emotionally out there. And that's how I've been ever since, ever since, um, you know, so that's probably the biggest thing that I've learned. And the fact that I can be put in a guillotine and, you know, where my head's about to rip off and not give up. <laughs> but uh, but I, that has a lot to do with just being on the grind all the time, man. Being put in uncomfortable situations and being comfortable with being uncomfortable. 
You know, there's a fine line that you guys have to walk because on one hand, you know, it's like a, a batter is trying to hit a home run. If you try to hit a home run, you usually don't hit the home run, right? And it's the same thing. You want to make something happen in the fight and you want to get the big punch and you want to get the, the kick or whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish in the fight. So you want to make it happen, but you also can't, you know, be too, you know, so there, can you discuss like sort of the difficulty of, you know, pushing too much as opposed to holding back too much? Yeah, man, you kind of have to find that happy medium because if you if you push too hard, you end, you end up running into something or getting taken down. So you have to find that happy medium. And that really relies on what your opponent's doing. If your opponent's really aggressive, maybe something, you, you know, you'll react differently for somebody who backs away like Tyron did. You know, Tyron just kind of backed up and backed up. And that's when I should have been a little bit more aggressive um, instead of waiting on him. Right. So, and that comes with experience. That comes with a lot of sparring sessions, a lot of training sessions to, le to learn, to try and find that happy medium. Interesting. I want to ask you this before I let you go then. So, you know, talking to Gilbert today, he said, you know, that he really struggled for about a month after losing to Usman because he didn't understand what had happened to him, that he felt like he had put all this time in all the effort and that he had a perfect plan and, you know, it happened. But he did say that he took solace in the fact that when he stuck to the plan early in the fight, it was working. It was just when he went away from the plan, it didn't. Do you, can you relate to what he was saying? And, and do you feel like, you know, how he's going to be going into this fight, given, you know, you were kind of in a similar situation after uh, Willie. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. There's such the mindset. I, I know exactly what that feels like. Like why did, why did it not perform the way I wanted to perform? But sometimes you can be drawn into a fight or your opponent's fight and not make it your own. Right. And I believe that Kamara Usman drew him into Kamara's fight instead of the other way around. And you got to be careful of that. You know, you got to stick to what, you, and, I, and also I think at, at some point in time, his mindset changed a little bit. You know, he was going out there and he was thinking about what he was going to do to Tyron. And at some point in time, when he didn't knock him out, when he didn't finish him, he was more worried about what Kamara Usman was doing to him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's a big difference. That's no a big difference in mindset for sure. Well, I'll tell you what, everybody's excited about the main event at UFC 264, but I've said it a million times. Do not sleep on this co-main event between Wonder Boy Thompson and Gilbert Burns. It's going to be a fun one. Stephen, I appreciate your brother. Thank you so much. Good to talk to you again. All the best on uh, Saturday. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you and definitely enjoyed it. Have a good one, sir. You too. Bye-bye.